this is Bulbul Rai and my project topic is analysis of V-blast detection method in MIMI systems for enhanced system performance. Now the basic overview that I will be providing about uh, what all we are going to cover in the next few slides some. First we'll cover the architecture of V-blast, then the detection algorithm used in V-blast, the different types of detectors used in V-blast, risk zero forcing, minimum mean square error, maximum likelihood and zero forcing or minimum mean square error with ordered successive interference cancellation or OSIC. Then we'll go over to the analysis of detectors. Finally, we'll check the simulation that we have performed using MATLAB and discuss the results. Now an introduction to VBLAST traces back to MIMO systems with the demand in increased data rate and system throughput or system capacity, MIMO systems have become highly efficient in increasing system capacity. Multiple antennae and transmitter and receiver improve link reliability. Now how do they do so? When you have multiple transmitters and multiple receivers, they basically uh, help to overcome fading effects. And that is why MIMO is so popular. Now, in um, VBLAST, what exactly is VBLAST? Firstly, uh, VBLAST stands for Vertical Bell Labs Space-Time Coding, a layered space-time coding. It is a transceiver architecture. It is deployed in MIMO receivers in order to employ spatial multiplexing. Because of the effects of spatial multiplexing, VBLAST is an efficient detection method which can be employed at the receiver end of the MIMO receivers and we will see how it is efficient in the next few slides when we go over the algorithm of VBLAST in details. Now this is the transceiver architecture of a MIMO having a VBLAST detection system. As you see this is the transmitter data. You have the encoder here which uh, is passed on. The data is divided into several layers and it is passed on into the um, Basically, you pass it on to the transmitters and um, the transmitter antennae and thereafter you have the receiver antennae which is passed on into the VBLAST uh, detection uh, system. Now, the architecture as you see consists of N transmitters and um, N receiver antennae. Now, the VBLAST is used for detection of transmitted symbols at the receiver. Okay. When we go about uh, uh, what exactly the architecture consists of, we will see that uh, it has n transmitters and each of them operate at uh, a symbol rate of 1 by t. Now each of the receiver um, or n receivers, they basically operate four channel and each of them will receive a superposition of the faded signals. Here we make an assumption that the channel has flat fading. Uh, now uh, because of uh, multiplexing or spatial multiplexing of coded and uncoded symbols over the MIMO channel, we can achieve high spectral efficiency using VBLAST. Now, the detector at VBLAST makes its decision based on the set of symbols or the estimate of symbols closest in Euclidean distance to the received symbols. Now, we go over in details about the actual detection algorithm which is used in VBLAST. Your incoming data stream is divided into M substreams called layers. The M substreams are arranged horizontally across space and time. Now, the detection process will basically consist of two steps. First is interference suppression or nulling, and second is interference cancellation or subtraction. Now, interference suppression basically means that when you obtain the received vector, it is projected onto an orthogonal or perpendicular subspace which is created or spanned by the interfering signals. Now since it is orthogonal, the subspace is orthogonal to the interfering signals, basically this uh, particular process removes interference so that detection can be performed in the absence of interference. Second step, that is interference cancellation, uh, removes the detected symbol from the received vector. This is the basic uh, algorithm or the underlying principle involved in VBLAST. One is interference suppression, second is interference cancellation. We'll go about it in details as to how mathematically all of these steps are performed. Now, considering that you have a channel function given by matrix H, which is an n uh, row m column matrix, 
where each of the element of the transfer function from transmitter j to receiver i given m less than equal to n. And you also have a transmitted symbol vector which is given by a. Your received vector will be given as um, basically the channel function uh, multiplied by your transmitted symbol plus an additive noise vector which will be added in the process. So it's given as R1 is HA plus B, B is your noise vector. Now you, you will have an expected order of symbols at the receiver where you expect that you obtain your transmitted symbols in a particular order and that is given as your S. Now your S here is a permutation of all possible combinations that can be expected at the receiver. You will have a decision parameter y which is required to obtain the estimate of the transmitted symbols at the receiver. Now the interference nulling and cancellation steps which we read about in the previous slide will actually be um, used to calculate this decision vector y. Now uh, in order to carry out nulling, a nulling vector called w1 is used and it is used to calculate the decision vector y. As you see here, yk1 is w1 transpose r1, that is a received vector having a matrix multiplication with the transpose of your nulling vector will give you your decision statistic. Now your decision statistic or decision vector is basically sliced in the next step to obtain an estimate of the transmitted signal. So what you are doing here basically is your, your final aim is to calculate an estimate of the transmitted vector at the um, receiver. To obtain that first step you do interference nulling and uh, cancellation in order to calculate your decision statistic. Uh, this decision statistic is calculated in step 1 as seen here. In the second step you obtain your estimate from the decision statistic by implementing a slicing operation over by all. In the third step you obtain your estimate and you assume that they it is actually equal to the transmitted vector and based on this assumption you remove the uh, estimate from your received vector to obtain a modified received vector which is a subtraction of this estimate from your current received vector R1. So you get R2. Here H of K denotes the kth column of the channel matrix. Now um, these three steps will actually be uh, carried out in recursion again and again until you finally have uh, mm, uh, an, uh, an exact estimate of your uh, output vector or the detection is complete. Now these three steps will be performed for all the elements of the expected vector S because S can be a combination of all possible expected transmitted symbols of the receiver. Hence it has these three steps have to be performed in recursion to obtain your modified received vector R3 and R4 and so on till you get your final received vector. Now this this algorithm, uh, the first three steps are the generic part which is common to all kinds of V-blast detectors. Next, in the next slide we'll see that based on the choice of the detector, the V-blast detectors, we can actually uh, specify the algorithm further. The first type of detector is a zero forcing technique. Uh, this is a very widespread uh, detector which is used, which is widely used. Now, the main characteristic of a detector which classifies it is its nulling vector w. Your nulling vector w in this case is defined as the minimum norm vector which is defined by 0 for j greater than i and 1 for j equal to i. Now your noise power of the decision statistic is proportional to this nulling vector because it is a multiplication of the nulling vector and your received vector. And so later, when you calculate your signal-to-noise ratio, it will become proportional to the variance of this nulling vector. Now the full uh, algorithm of um, zero-forcing technique is actually a recursive procedure as we went by in the last slide. And so um, you will finally obtain an initialization which is given as i equals to 1, g of 1 is equal to uh, the pseudo inverse of H, uh, H being a channel transfer matrix. Uh, the pseudo inverse is obtained by a special technique and uh, 
this the value is initialized to g1 the part of the recursion algorithm is firstly determine your optimal s vector that we discussed about in the last slide by this particular formula ki is argument of minimum value of gij square or the variance norm of gij j is not an element from k1 to ki minus 1 then only this particular thing equation will be satisfied then you have your nulling vector wki which is equal to uh, gi into ki ki obtained in the previous step from the nulling vector you obtain a deficient statistic as we defined by the multiplication of the transpose of nulling vector and its z vector then you finally obtain your uh, statistic or the uh, estimate of the transmitted symbol a1 ki based on the slicing operation of the decision statistic then you obtain the modified received vector by elimination of this estimated vector from your received vector now you have um, a new value of your uh, gi plus 1 given as h h1 ki and you increment i2 i plus 1 um, h1 ki plus is basically a pseudo inverse of this new matrix h1 ki and it is uh, obtained specially by certain mathematical techniques and um, your g i j is the j throw of your channel matrix g which is obtained from h um, next we go about to minimum mean square type of detection method um, the difference between this and the zero forcing technique is that minimum mean square method does interference and noise suppression uh, as compared to zero forcing technique which only eliminates interference now minimum mean square error uses a simple linear receiver another uh, special fact about this is that at low SNRs DAX is a matched filter and this detector tends to act as a zero forcing technique at high SNR um, the recursion algorithm is similar to zero forcing technique the main difference is um, in the filter matrix here uh, as you can see in the previous slide you started it with the pseudo inverse of H here it becomes uh, the Hermitian matrix of H multiplied by the channel matrix H again plus a certain parameter sigma and the identity matrix again multiplied by this Hermitian matrix so that your final filter output becomes this channel ma matrix into your transmitted vector given by this particular equation now if you have an extended channel matrix H1 and an extended received vector X1 then if you have the formula of H1 as a matrix whose first row is H and second row is uh, the sigma n int and you have the extended receive vectors X and zeros then your output of MMSE filter will finally become this complex equation so basically this entire algorithm differentiates it from the zero forcing technique the channel matrix used in minimum mean square error is different it is a complex multiplication and uh, addition of using Hermitian matrices and uh, parameters like sigma you basically change your channel matrix and you obtain an extended channel matrix and you finally get your output of the MMSC filter thereafter the steps are similar to zero forcing technique the recursion steps are performed as seen in this slide these recursion steps will be performed in MMSC detector as well the third detector that we have is maximum likelihood it is one of the most common and first methods used with VBLAST mm, its main disadvantage is it is um, very complicated it is a very complex architecture and difficult to implement but if we go about uh, what it exactly does it is used for vector decoding it is highly instrumental in reduction of the bit error mm, rate or the probability of error it gives a very good bit error performance um, your received signals are compared with all possible com combinations of transmitted signal vector which is the S vector then a transmitted signal vector is obtained from your channel matrix H uh, the estimate of transmitted symbol vector X is given by um, argument minimum value of the um, difference of your uh, actual channel matrix value from the receiver the norm of this entire expression so this is the main um, formula for maximum likelihood 
the estimate formula is totally different from zero forcing technique and minimum mean square technique here you take the difference of the received vector from the actual expected received vector you carry out its norm value you take the minimum value of that for all possible combinations and then you take this argument as your estimate of the transmitted symbol vector here the assumption is xk belongs to one of the total number of estimated vectors x1, x2 up to xk then the error reduction is performed over all of these possible estimates B blast with zero forcing technique or MMSC with OSIC now OSIC is ordered successive interference cancellation it is a very um, uh, efficient technique to totally minimize interference now uh, the algorithm is again explained here you again have the initialization i equals to 1 you have your g of i equals to h plus um, uh, by g i uh, h plus is again your pseudo inverse matrix and uh, the entire formula is given here basically it's another complicated formula similarly kind of similar to MMSC then you again have the recursion algorithm so basic differences between all of these detectors the cha channel matrix and in case of maximum likelihood it's the estimate of the transmitted symbol this recursion method again follows with the calculation of nulling vector your decision statistic then your channel uh, estimate value then subtraction of the uh, estimate from the received vector to obtain the new received vector and then um, changing of the channel matrix again and increment of the iteration value uh, next we go over to the simulation uh, if we go over to our code we will see We first have established a MATLAB code for a 2 into 2 MIMO system using QPSK modulation. And in this system, we have implemented all of our detectors in BBLAST. So as you can see, we have uh, initialized the number of transmitter antennae and number of receiver antennae. We have taken a range for our input SNR in dB. And then we have taken an uh, auxiliary white caution noise uh, these are for modulation and this reshaping is in order to reshape your matrix uh, dimensions in order to satisfy the final uh, calculations then you have your value of sigma which we talked about the parameter sigma here uh, thereafter we calculate the pseudo inverse of H we calculate the channel output the channel matrix of uh, H we calculate the uh, channel matrices for each of the different type of detectors called G, G1, etc. Um, the first algorithm is for maximum likelihood. Uh, this algorithm basically calculates your difference from the actual received vector. As you can see in this step, this particular step, uh, it calculates the difference of the uh, received vector and the expected uh, vector of I mean performing the multiplication of the channel matrix and the transmitted signal and then it performs a uh, norm of this uh, particular vector uh, in this entire loop and then it calculates the minimum value and this gives you the final uh, estimate of your transmitted symbol and which is stored in this, d mm, this zero second one is your zero forcing technique this is a very simple technique you basically have your channel matrix g into r is your uh, output and then you take it and uh, you um, calculate your channel estimate as per the formula that we discussed earlier then sec similarly you have an MMSC but your channel estimate or your channel matrix is G1 in zero forcing technique your channel uh, matrix is G so the di basic difference in the two techniques is the channel matrix used then you have um, your zero forcing technique with OSIC um, here you have uh, interference cancellation you have a full loop because you have to implement interference cancellation as well and you have to implement a different uh, channel matrix which is calculated for each case of the transmitted vector symbol then you have your MMSC with OSIC uh, and finally we will plot the uh, bit error rate performance for each of these um, uh, detectors implemented in BBLAST and see which one is the most efficient 
So I'll go ahead and run this simulation. It will take some time because there are a lot of iterations for a very big data range. So meanwhile, let me tell you that for uh, MMSC with OSIC, uh, the trade-off is achieved between noise uh, uh, in increase and interference cancellation, whereas in case of ZF uh, with um, uh, OSIC, you only consider the interference. So here you see that you get a simulation results. Uh, this, the black curve corresponds to maximum likelihood. So you see it is the best bit error rate performance among all the detectors. It should actually uh, ideally be used mostly, but only because of its high complexity in implementation, we proceed to other detectors which ha in, uh, provide lesser cost and lesser and are less cumbersome. Uh, anyways, we'll perform a comparison. You see that uh, your maximum likelihood detector provides the best BER performance, followed by mm, your MMSC with OSIC because it uh, performs efficient interference cancellation and uh, achieves a trade-off between interference cancellation and noise increase and uh, followed by ZF with OSIC, the green line that you see. Um, this has a, a bit rate, um, this um, ZF plus OSIC, I'm sorry, the pink curve. Thereafter you have the green curve which is for MMSE and finally the least uh, bit error rate performance is provided by your ZF, a zero forcing technique. So um, the best bit error rate performance is perf perf performed by uh, maximum likelihood and the least by zero forcing technique. And if you implement OSIC and zero forcing technique, it kind of improves the bit error rate performance. Now this particular um, simulation is for a QPSK modulation implemented in a two by two MIMO or a MIMO of second order. Next, we'll go about, we perform the similar kind of experiment in a 16 QAM system and here we use a 4 by 4 MIMO instead of a 2 by 2 MIMO in order to show the um, it results on a higher order MIMO. Um, so it is the same kind of um, coding except that you have modulation of 16 QAM and you have um, a 4 by 4 MIMO. MIMO that is co antennae transmitter and co antennae and receiver. So I'll just simulate this particular graph and here we have a perfect graph showing the bit error rate. Again, you have here, here we actually do not compare, uh, uh, we just compared ZF with MMSC and ZF plus OSIC with MMSC plus OSIC in general because these are the most widespread methods used ZF and MMSC. So as you see, your MMSC with OSIC has the best bit error rate performance and your simples as ZF has the worst or the least bit error rate performance comparatively. Uh, still Z0 forcing technique is used uh, and um, in um, especially applications where the bit error rate requirement is not very stringent. Uh, we also have performed an analysis of MIMO order with a particular type of detecting technique. For instance, here we have the zero forcing technique we have done two analysis, one for 2 into 2 MIMO and one for 4 into 4 MIMO. If I simulate this, we'll see that for the zero forcing technique, you have a lower bit error rate performance for a lower order MIMO and you have a higher bit error rate performance for a higher order MIMO. Same thing will also be achieved if we use it for MMSC as we see in the next code. If we run it for MMSC, you will see again that for this blue curve corresponds to 2 into 2 MIMO, so it has a lower bit error rate performance as compared to a higher order MIMO. So I'll go back to the slides now. So these are your simulation results that we discussed. Maximum likelihood having the highest bit error rate as compared to your zero forcing technique and MMSC. Uh, same thing for 16 QAM modulation. Then you have it for different orders of MIMO. As you see, as order increases, bit error rate performance uh, becomes better and better. So here are your results summarized. You have maximum likelihood detector providing best bit error rate performance. Because of increase in complexity in receiver architecture, the implementation is difficult and hence it is uh, being substituted by ZF and MMSC. MMSC with OSIC your interference cancellation provides good bit error rate performance as compared to only MMSC. It minimizes interference with much less noise enhancement. Your zero forcing with OSIC also provides a decent good uh, bit error rate. 
then uh, you have MMSC detector compared to ZF which is better and finally you have ZF which provides the least deteriorated performance. Also as the order of MIMO increases the deteriorated performance for a given detection method increases. Finally analysis of detection methods you have your mm, zero forcing technique it is used in VBLAST in order to reduce the complexity that's why it was uh, devised however it only suppresses interference and it cannot suppress noise so that is a disadvantage of zero forcing technique then you have your MMSE it suppresses both interference and noise and hence is superior to ze um, zero forcing technique at low SNR it becomes a mesh filter at high SNR it approaches a zero forcing detection the maximum likelihood is the best with VER performance but receiver complexity makes it difficult to implement ZF with OSIC and MMSC with OSIC are enhanced versions of ZF and MMSC respectively because they provide for efficient interference cancellation. So finally we'll conclude about the detection methods in VBLAST. VBLAST has been an efficient method of increasing capacity and we have made a study of different types of detectors which can be used. There are some other detectors as well like SCBC which are still uh, being experimented in VBLAST as a combination of both of them. Uh, in order to see a trade-off between system complexity and bitterate rate uh, performance. Now you have a multiple number of transmitter and receiver antennae and with that if you couple it with the VBLAST technique you obtain a very high channel throughput. Then you also have your trade-offs based on your cost factor, your availability, your architecture setup. You have signal to noise ratio, error probability and interference effect. And finally a VBLAST architecture it significantly increases your MIMO performance with further improvements, as I said, there are different types of detection methods still being hunted for and the current detection methods can still be improved on. It can actually uh, obtain a very high throughput and optimum error probability curve and obtain an error free detection at the MIMO receiver. So that's it from my side for on VBLAST. Thanks a lot. Thank you.